Okay, so today we have come to the wind tunnel here in Germany. We're going to be doing some testing with my Q bike. Obviously, I've done some racing on this bike before. So this is a more up-to-date testing in the wind tunnel, mainly looking at my position, seeing if we can dial it a little bit more, making some small changes. So there's not going to be too much different things to test, but we just want to be super precise and see if we can save some more watts. So I've probably gone to the wind tunnel more than a handful of times during my career, really trying to fine tune my position. And we have come a very long way since I first started out. Even in my early pro races, I was not dialed at all in my position. So we've spent years really dialing that, being as aero as possible, but at the same time being comfortable because you need to deliver power for a very long time when you're riding an Ironman. It's all well and good being super aero, but if you can't deliver the power or you can't hold the position for very long, it's point so over the years we've really looked into that and tried to maximize what is possible for me one of the things that we have noticed over the years is that due to my shoulders from my days as a swimmer we are not limited but it doesn't really seem to matter what we do with the front end it doesn't change my CDA or, or my drag so there's pros and cons to that it basically means that we can adjust the front to be as comfortable as possible for me and it won't make me any slower. On the flip side, we have pretty much, I think, hit our limit of making me any faster in the front end of my position. So have we done 559 runs already? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is that number? Oh, it's 57, I think. Oh, okay, so it's 50, this is 59? Yeah. So Not 559, no, <laughs> I was going to say. I'm not completely in it, but it is like, he, he just takes 500 to miscount something oh, okay. and then adds up the number. So it's always starting with 501 oh, and then okay, you're yeah. starting. So we are not planning to do as many <laughs> as yesterday today. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's not much. <laughs> Everywhere I go, mould is produced. No, it feels quite cold in here without it even on. <laughs> So I put little dots on Lucy where her sleeve and the leg on her tri suit was so that in between tunnel runs if the sleeve rolls up or Lucy goes to the toilet and needs to take the suit off and then put the suit back on again we can make sure that the suit is in exactly the same position so it's going to have minimal interference with the data that we're getting from the other stuff that we're testing. Yeah, otherwise 
yeah, like the chocolate would be up like that. Yeah, but so, what you are though, like, I mean, you're just the one that does. So do you. Yeah, I know, but you have to look at that. <laughs> you're looking at that, and you need to do it so you're actually in the... Why is my chin that big? Yeah, so again, over the years, we've really dialed my equipment choices to make sure that they're as aerodynamic as possible and as comfortable as possible. So starting with my race suit, since I started out in triathlon, I've pretty much worn Endura. It is the fastest suit for me. I work with them really closely to get that suit tailored to me in terms of where we have different material on the suit to maximize the aero efficiency. I've tried going sleeveless, I've tried lots of different things, but we've always gone back to that Endura suit being the fastest for me. So I love it. I've raced in it for many years now. Super happy with the suit. Looking at the helmet over the years, I've tried many different helmets. We've settled on the Bambino Pro Evo from Cask after doing a lot of helmet testing last year, beginning of last year, I tried almost every helmet on the market and that was the fastest one for me. I actually really like the look and feel of the helmet as well. I have ridden it in Kona last year, it wasn't too hot, it had good ventilation so again that seems to work perfectly for my position on the bike. In terms of the bike itself, obviously over the years I have adapted my position. I've worked with Cube closely over the last year or so, adapting the new Cube Arium C68X to make it optimised for me with custom aero bars at the front that have been moulded specifically to my arms. So we're pretty much getting to the maxing out of optimising of all of my equipment. But yeah, super happy with where we're at at the moment. So we've definitely looked at trying the most aerodynamic, ridiculous position possible and the saving for me was so marginal but the discomfort was so huge it just didn't make any sense to go any lower, to try and squeeze my shoulders any tighter. Point two. Well, that's nothing, yeah. Well, you don't change anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like no different. It's it's like, like, that's what happened last time. We spent all I know, time. but I don't know if it's... Because of the shoulder width, that it, you can't change that. So yeah, you need to have a special so strap, you yeah, know, yeah. Like in front. Yeah. Just pulling them in, yeah. Cable tie, <laughs> it's a big one. Yeah. We actually kind of measured before with a tape measure the width of my shoulders and how narrow I could actually squeeze them. And it was a marginal change, but the discomfort was huge and actually it really wasn't much faster, so it became pointless. I would just be in a world of pain, probably 20k into a 180k ride. For me, yes, you want to be aero, but comfort has to come first because at the end of the day, you are running a marathon off of that bike. And if you've put yourself into this little twisted up knot on the bike, your body is not going to be happy when it gets off and has to run pretty fast for quite a long way after riding for so much time. Yes. So in the act. <laughs> this is literally my favourite pastry as well. say that the best way of improving your aero position is just getting out and riding it, riding it on the trainer, trying to stay in your bars as long as possible, going out and riding in windy conditions, trying to ride uphill in your tri bars. It's the most specific way of training your position. Other than that, I mean, I do a lot of gym work to strengthen my glutes, my back, my core, all of that's gonna make holding an aero position easier, but really there's nothing I do outside of being on the bike in the aero position that is actually going to improve that. So I'd say the biggest changes are definitely to you and your position on the bike. In terms of like placing bottles on the bike, it can be important with how they interact with the frame and with yourself, but that will be quite individual to each person. So for me personally, because I'm quite broad at the front, when I put bottles behind me, it has absolutely 
no penalty in aerodynamics where smaller athletes may actually find that putting bottles one or two behind them may actually make them a bit slower but for me it had no negative effect so definitely it's worth playing around with testing where you want bottles on the bike i'm super happy though that with the new cube bike and the integrated storage i don't really need to have a bottle on the down tube of the bike if it was a super windy course then maybe it would be a benefit to just be reaching down to get it off of the down tube rather than reaching behind but at the moment that's something that I'm going to play around with in training because I think I'm probably only going to need to carry maybe one bottle especially in Kona where there's so many aid stations there's the pro aid stations there's special needs it pretty much means that I can have all of my nutrition that I need on the bike without adding loads of bottles to the frame as well. It's really interesting we even opened the storage for today completely open yeah it was not visible oh wow yeah so even if you lost the door, it doesn't matter. So one of the other things that we just validated on was my wheel setup and tyre setup. So I'm currently running DT Swiss wheels and Schwalbe tyres. We wanted to look at different configurations. Is there a penalty if I run a shallower rim in Kona, for example, where it can be really windy? So we was just looking at what's the penalty from going from maybe a 50 mil rim depth all the way up to an 80 mil rim depth. But ultimately, actually, if you cannot handle your bike and you have to sit up in a crosswind, you're gonna lose way more watts than running a skinnier rim. So yeah, it's just about testing it outside and seeing what's realistic. When we're in the tunnel, we're generally testing at quite high speed. So I think we're looking at around 40 kilometers an hour. Generally, the faster you are moving, the more important it is to be aero. So actually, when you're climbing up a hill, for example, there's no point being super tucked in aero. You want to be laying down the power and getting over the hill. But when you're going super fast with a tailwind and maybe going downhill, that's when you want to be most aero, most tucked up. I would say going with that theory, you would think that it's more important to be aero going at faster speeds. So maybe, yeah, if you're an age group and not moving as fast, maybe it's not as important, but I'd still say you're getting free, easy speed if you can be more aero or you can have your bottles in better places. So if you get the opportunity to go to a wind tunnel, it is an amazing thing to do, amazing opportunity, but it's probably not super essential unless you're racing at the top end in the professional field. So the main takeaways from the day were I'm on an extremely fast bike, I've got a really good optimised position, we've been able to make some small adjustments which have actually not cost me anything, they've made me more comfortable on the bike, so excited to now take that from the tunnel and take it out into the real world, do some more testing because I think one of the biggest things is when you're in the tunnel, you can trick yourself into thinking, yeah, this is a completely realistic position to being. Having my head this low and this tucked in is completely realistic. Then you take it out on the road and you realize you can't actually see where you're going. So it's really important to then validate it out on the road. So that's what I'm gonna be doing over the next couple of weeks and months, is just really dialing that position in before my next competition. No, the riding itself isn't hard, it's just a long time concentrating yeah. and you've got the line that you've got to stick to otherwise you're kind of making that run mm. a bit void if you come out of the line that's drawn so yeah. you have to hold that exact position. The hardest bit is just focusing for that long. We started riding at 8.30am and it's 4.30pm, mm. <laughs> that's a long ride. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's a bit of a wrap up about my trip to the wind tunnel. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting, got some insights into my position and the wind tunnel data. As always, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos coming soon. Battle bar. And that is the clip for the end of the video. <laughs>